Jeff here and welcome to my corner and welcome to Quick Tip Tuesday number 14 or is it 15? Uh, I forgot to check but I'll correct it in the editing. Uh, today we're going to talk about recreating or creating uh, weld seams. You know the little pesky things that sometimes you you have to uh, or either accidentally remove or have to remove when you assemble your armor piece. So today we're going to show you a way to recreate that or repair it or even add some more. Uh, if you want to add some detail to your tank and you want to make it look realistic, sometimes it looks better when you apply uh, like an extra small kind of a weld seam around it or, a we or just a weld around it. Now there are different methods to do, to do weld seams, uh, there is uh, different uh, uh, tricks out there, but today we're going to concentrate on making them with milliput. And yes, it's milliput. Uh, I like to I like to work with milliput. What can I say? Or as a matter of fact, with uh, epoxy sculpt, uh, same thing. Uh, basically, just you get a little bit more uh, value for money. So this technique is um, to me works really great. Uh, it really gives you a, a, a really realistic result, and uh, it's not all that hard to do, as I said. Now there are many. Uh, techniques out there uh, there are also many well seams you know the Russians the, the Germans and, and the Americans they all had their different technique they all had their different welding kind of uh, kind of method so we'll come back later on and uh, discuss some other ones but for now we're just gonna keep it simple we're just gonna uh, use the milliput to create some or repair some well seam so uh, if this is something that uh, interests you then uh, you should keep watching so uh, after this uh, we'll come back for some final thoughts so stay tuned so first of all let me show you what you need uh, first of all of course most important is the milliput or in this case the epoxy sculpt i found that the uh, epoxy sculpt is more durable uh, it's less expensive actually when you see when you compare what you get uh, value for money then epoxy uh, sculpt is the best now uh, these are about uh, eight ounce uh, containers now they small they sell smaller containers I think they they uh, they sell about uh, one ounce containers so if you don't work a lot with milliput then there is no need to go with the eight ounce you can easily go with one ounce uh, containers and you'll find them all over the place uh, just google them and it will come up but make sure you get the epoxy sculpt now they come in different colors I always go with the light color but uh, if it's not available and, and, and there is only a darker color available it works just fine it just uh, coloration of the putty itself so that's what you need then a uh, second uh, thing on the list is a piece of plastic sheet now it doesn't really have to be plastic sheet anything with a smooth uh, surface will work like a piece of glass or a piece of uh, formica uh, uh, even if your wife uh, uh, lets you use the uh, kitchen table then uh, go for it but I would advise to just get you a little piece of plastic sheet that can serve as uh, basically your base to do stuff on Another thing is uh, a cup of water, a cup of a small cup of uh, tap water you need. And then of course uh, the good old trusted uh, baby powder or talcum powder. Uh, this is from Johnson's, but again, it does not matter what kind of uh, talcum powder you have. Go for the cheap one. I got this from Walmart in the dollar selection or the travel selection. So that will work. Uh, a couple of paint brushes you need. Uh, this is like uh, number two or number three, and then a fine one like this. Uh, again, uh, no big deal. Uh, a knife, a hobby knife, either a scalpel or uh, 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 an exacto, doesn't matter. And then last but not least, you need like a little tool to make the indentations into the putty. And I like to use the Waldron uh, punch and die set, the mini set. Uh, why? Well, they come in different sizes so you can create different size of welds. You know, sometimes you have to be a little bit bigger, sometimes it's tight corners, small corners, you have to use a small uh, bezel. So, but what you need to look for, you can also use uh, probably the back of, uh, a, if you have some drill bits, you can also use the, the back of it uh, to make uh, the imprints. But what you have to look for is the, of course, the flat, the flat surface at the bottom. Uh, as you can tell here uh, at the bottom, it needs to be flat and round. And that's what you need to make the indentations. And again, like I said, if you don't have uh, a Waldron uh, set, uh, do not buy one to do this. Uh, I'm sure you'll find some other stuff around the house that will help you. Just make sure that it's the right size that you need. And of course, that uh, the tip is basically flat and round. And that's basically it. Uh, that's basically it. That's all you need uh, to create these welds. So now let's, uh, let's proceed and let me show you um, what uh, a couple of tricks to make or to recreate uh, uh, a nice weld seam. First of all, you grab a little putty, 
uh, from each container, from the A and the B. And you start mixing these together until you get like a uniform color. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to demonstrate this. Uh, we're going to put like a weld seam here, like you see around this, around this ridge here. We're going to create, uh, it really doesn't belong there, but just for uh, demos, demo purposes, it's easy uh, to show you that we can do uh, a little weld seam here. So what you do is uh, you take a little bit off and you start making a little uh, string out of it. Do it like that. Okay, roll it. And again, it all depends how big the seam is or how small the seam is. It all depends. Uh, it, it has to look uh, correct. It has to look to scale. So you might have to try this a few times. But let's say that this is about right. So. Uh, then you take a cup of water and then just uh, wet the, um, uh, the, the area where you're gonna apply the weld seam. And then try to pick this up uh, and just put it in place there, like this. You can always cut the excess off And then press it on a little bit, like this. Make sure that it's pressed in there tightly. You can use your finger. And again, once you get the hang of it, it will go better because uh, this area here is pretty easy, but sometimes you have to do it in a corner and that might take a little bit more work, but the principle is all the same, so. Uh, let me see this, and then if there is some excess, you just uh, slice it off. Roll it again. Off here. As you can tell, we have a nice little fill here, a nice smooth fill, and um, now we're going to make the imprints. I'll take a couple of uh, uh, close-up pictures and I'll attach them at the end of the video. So first of all, we're going to apply some talcum powder. Just uh, sprinkle some talcum powder on on the plastic sheet and then take a bigger brush actually and then just uh, go over it with a talcum powder. This is really necessary in a way because you do not want to uh, that your your uh, your tool got stuck into the milliput or that you by accidentally uh, pull the milliput back out because milliput uh, and you know that uh, once you mix it up it's pretty tacky. So okay let's uh, let's take a tool Maybe this one is the good one. I think so. So, okay, so now all you do is just make little kind of imprints here. Making little mouse steps here, very little, and sometimes you can go back and forth, it all depends. very close together, almost on, almost on top of each other. And of course, once in a while, clean uh, your bezel off or the tool you're using because you don't want milliput to get stuck on there because if you reapply it, then it might pull the other one out. So, there you go, that's all you do.
it doesn't have to be really all that consistent because if you look at pictures, a lot of the seams are very rough or a lot of the weld seams are very rough. So and that's about it. That's all you need to do. Now you can refine that more if you want to. And of course uh, you, you can make it easier if you even take a, a bigger bezel, uh, you can even get uh, maybe even a, a better effect. It all depends what you, uh, what you wanna do with it, uh, how far you wanna take it. So the, the trick is to do this a couple of times uh, back and forth, uh, just so that you have enough of the little mouse traps, like I like to call them, or you can even use even a smaller one, uh, all depending on the size that you're that you're working on or the uh, effect that you want to create. So, but that's all you do. And uh, here we go. Uh, as I said, I will uh, include some pictures at the end of the video. But uh, that's all it is. And uh, to me, it looks pretty realistic. Now let's try another one and uh, make one around here, around this here. Uh, same principle. Uh, we start with a little little string. around here. I have the, if your piece that, that the string that you, now if the string that you make uh, breaks, don't worry about it. You can easily apply another piece to fill the gap. Because it will all and eventually blend together. Once again, we use uh, some of the talcum powder just to prevent from the tool to stick. And then we do the same thing, just making small in imprints all around it. And that's basically it. Uh, all you need to do is just uh, put like a little milliput in place, uh, press it on, add some some um, some talcum powder just to prevent from your tool to stick, and then just make little tiny steps, little tiny imprints all around it. And you can repeat this process until you're satisfied. It all depends uh, how far you want to take this. But once you put like a piece of uh, paint over it, once you cover it with uh, or airbrush it or airbrush your model you would be surprised how good it looks. So that was all. I mean, again, it's all about practice, all about trial and error. But if you're, uh, if you're patient with it, you can get some nice result without creating a, must be, uh, a mess. Because all you need to do if you uh, make a mistake, just uh, take a wet brush, wipe it all off and start over. So here you go. That's how you create uh, weld seams with Milliput. So there you have it boys and girls, I uh, hope you liked it, hope you learned something of it. Uh, like I said, it's not really a, diff a difficult technique, uh, it's just trial and error, try it a few times, get the hang of it, and you will be rewarded. Uh, and worst case scenario, if it doesn't really work out, then you, can, you just scrape it off and uh, start over. That's the beauty of this method. But uh, like I said, it's, it really, really works, uh, just have to be a little bit patient and uh, go from there. So uh, that was it. I uh, hope you liked it, of course. And don't forget, please, to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Jeff East Corner. And, of course, like and share us on Facebook. Most importantly, however, visit us at uh, www.jeffvcornerstore.com for all your future uh, modeling needs or purchases or uh, even a question. If you have a problem, if you have an issue, if, uh, if you want some help in anything, please let us know through the support at jeffvcornerstore.com and we will definitely, definitely get back to you and uh, try to help. So uh, that's it. I wish you all a very good uh, rest of the day and I'll see you guys next week or even this week 
uh, with some more rambling that I'm gonna do or a couple more posts and of course Sunday at seven o'clock uh, central time I'll be there live so for now uh, you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys later Jeffy here signing off Thank you.